Okay, uh, I will start with a very short introduction of the EGI program and we're always still waiting for our audience to join. Uh, especially for those who first joined the EGI webinar, very welcome. The EGI webinar is designed to provide the EGI community with the knowledge of latest and most advanced EGI services, cutting edge technology development and scientific application tools. Our program focuses on hot topics and in this year we will uh, including talks, um, for example, artificial intelligence, machine learning, GPU, uh, green computing, cloud, EOS and data spaces, so on and so forth. Our goal is to bring the best speaker in the field to share their knowledge and insight with our community. In addition to provide a, a platform for discussion, our webinar is a, also aimed to provide the opportunity to share advanced service and solutions and best practices. So if you're uh, interested in promoting your own services, we encourage you to contact us. I, before we start our webinar, and I would uh, like to remind you our housekeeping rules, which will help us to deliver the webinar efficiently. So please keep your microphone and video de deactivated unless we give you permission. Um, uh, about the question, you can uh, put the, your question in the QA box. You can find a button at the bottom of the Zoom. We also have a, a QA session after the talk, and you can talk to the speaker and discuss your issues. And also, please use the raise hand uh, button or you can also find at the bottom of the uh, participate list. Uh, the talk will be recorded and also we have a very small survey and we, we will be very appreciate if you give your feedback which can help us to improve our program. And about each uh, webinar you can follow us uh, from the website and, we, and you can find the upcoming training and webinars. And if you missed any webinars, please, uh, you can find our YouTube channel. All the previous re uh, webinar are recorded there. If you have any request for a sp spe specific topic, please contact us at support at EGI.eu. Uh, we also encourage you to sign up our uh, training and webinar mailing list. So today's webinar, very excited. I will, uh, we will have this uh, webinar uh, talk uh, on the um, new generation of EGI container execution platform. Our honored guest speaker, Andrein, uh, which is a distinguished professional in informatics and cloud computing. And as a cloud engineering at, at CESNET, the Czech National e Infrastructure Center, Andrian and have a, a specialized in optimizing development for scientific applications. His PhD journey focused on creating metadata ontology and semantics for molecular dynamic data, aiming to revolutionize molecular research and putting engineering tool for the scientific community. Very welcome, Andrin. The floor is yours. Let me pass your the screen. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the EGI webinar. Uh, I will share my screen with the presentation and uh, we can start right ahead. So today's presentation uh, will be about the uh, the new generation of the container execution platform uh, at DGI that we are providing at uh, uh, that we are providing for our users at the national infrastructure and the Czech academia and also uh, 
to the EGI users and communities as well. So what to expect from today's seminar? Uh, we'll, we'll go through what the container platform is, uh, what new features uh, it has uh, uh, from the previous previous version like you uh, you have been used using and uh, then we will go through some uh, basics in uh, running containers, building containers and uh, and managing containers, then also something similar with the uh, Kubernetes. And uh, at the end, there will be a short demo of me uh, live demoing, deploying the, the application, building the container uh, to the Kubernetes. So let's hope everything will work. And uh, let's start with the introduction of the uh, cloud container platform. Uh, it is basically a managed, uh, managed environment where you can just execute uh, execute your uh, container workload uh, without knowing any anything about the underlying physical hardware or or uh, virtual virtualized uh, ha software or or uh, virtual machines and and so on. You you have just the uh, the APIs uh, to to run the uh, containers. Uh, the service also includes the uh, the container registry to store the containers because, uh, as it will be mentioned, we may no 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 want to use the public uh, registries for some reason. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the mm, it's managed Kubernetes, so uh, it's managed by the dedicated team. Uh, namely Lukasz Heitmanek from the Czech infrastructure and my my colleague uh, who is also here today, uh, Klara Moravcová from Cessnet. And uh, the the main feature is that the user is only provided by with a project uh, and uh, resource quota. So uh, you just log into some to some system. We will uh, showcase that later, and uh, you can start computing. No need to deploy any virtual machine and install some software. It is uh, integrated by the by the with the AGI check-in uh, for the seamless login experience, like you know from the other AGI services. Um, so it's possible to use the standard uh, authorization mechanism uh, to uh, control the access for for the project resources. And uh, the access is generally uh, available to users through the uh, voaccessegi.eu. Uh, the, we, we recognize the free tier projects, which are uh, some few resources with, uh, with uh, CPU time, which is limited to, to almost three months. So you can play, you know, get familiar with the platform, and if uh, if you if you have some use cases that requires guaranteed resources, something like uh, hosting a service or uh, trying to compute uh, something, you can reach out to get proper SLA from the EGI uh, through some open calls mechanisms and get uh, guaranteed resources. Okay, so. It means that uh, we build the new generation platform. It means that it uh, it features uh, new features basically. So as I mentioned, it is uh, fully fully managed Kubernetes. Uh, uh, it has the web graphical interface to to manage Kubernetes project and all uh, deployed applications and uh, uh, etc. To simplify basically the container operations, so we don't have to maybe always go through the command line or APIs or manifests uh, and so on. You can preview that in the, in the, in the graphical interface. Uh, there is also a catalog with the prepared applications. Uh, we think that the, they are mostly and widely used by the scientific community. For example, it is the virtual desktop. Uh, which features the connection through the VNC or, or uh, WebRTC, which is really 
good and accelerated uh, uh, remote desktop experience, which uh, <laughs> in some cases will allow you to to even play games like you know from some uh, game streaming uh, services. So it's it's pretty fast and and responsive. But then we have some managed uh, or uh, not managed, but you can deploy uh, the R Studio, MATLAB, and uh, and other other uh, software that that we provide in the in the catalog. And also um, we have some uh, operators which we think that are uh, also mostly used. And it's for example the Postgre operator, which features uh, stuff like uh, handling the uh, high availability operation of the database. If some if some node, uh, physical node of the Kubernetes will will crash or something, the database will schedule its replicas to another and uh, another physical hardware and point the uh, connection strings to uh, to this uh, to these new replicas. And also there are some backup mechanisms to uh, to secondary storage to ensure that the data uh, will will be not lost. Okay, so uh, the next thing is, for example, the dynamic DNS. Uh, the every ingress or load balancer will will uh, obtain the uh, dynamic DNS domain, so we don't have to remember the IP address or or uh, uh, have to uh, manage your DNS record for the newly created uh, ingress uh, object, and also the let's encrypt certificate bit outer enable. Uh, mechanism. So you have basically free uh, domain name and uh, TLS encryption of on your application. Uh, we are considering that we will add in the future the dynamic uh, DNS also within the EGI.eu space. So uh, so it will be also branded uh, uh, via the EGI. I mentioned the load balancer, uh, which is represented by the ingress object in Kubernetes, and yeah, uh, we have uh, we have one deployed that is shared, uh, and uh, uh, for most most cases, it is basically enough. Oh, my pointer is leaving me. Okay, and uh, also persistent storage. Uh, we have storage options. Uh, we we will uh, cover this in the in the slides. Okay, so so what's really available? Uh, hardware speaking, uh, we have some. I have some numbers here. Uh, the system is designed to be like the HPC system, so uh, it can be used to uh, to 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 be a solid for for some computational works. Uh, we have uh, maybe the most interesting thing is that we have many GPU accelerators. Uh, namely the NVIDIA A100, uh, which is the, the AI beast at the moment. And also the five terabytes of all flash persistent storage, which is uh, connected as a network storage. So there is some latency, but, but uh, uh, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty fast on IOPS operations and, and so on. So uh, given the context, so, uh, the the container compute is basically this row, and I don't uh, I I will not cover every every row, but uh, the most important is is highlighted uh, these highlighted ones, uh, which says that uh, in in the new generation of the container platform, you are basically using or running your workload in containers. Uh, the previous version of the of the container compute has been using the virtual machine with the docker installed and uh, and therefore you 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 got to to run the containers but this is now the native entity of the of the platform so okay so we covered basically the the simple introduction of the platform what it features and uh, and so and we'll come very briefly because I, I I understand that you you already are familiar with the you know, containers and usage of containers in scientific applications. So uh, very briefly, 
Uh, let's focus on the most important things. Uh, containers are good to distribute software because uh, if I want to to uh, distribute you a container with my application, I don't have to to uh, do it like platform dependent or use uh, some weird uh, build tools or or something like that. I just uh, I just install everything in in the container with the dependencies and all application files and uh, this this package uh, I can share you and uh, you will be uh, able to run it platform uh, independent. And it's lightweight, so I am not sharing you uh, the whole virtual machine, but only like one megabytes of of, of files. Uh, it doesn't apply for <laughs> for scientific applications, uh, for example, Gromax, where where you have uh, uh, five gigabytes or uh, something that is uh, for for the AI, uh, where the all dependencies and libraries can cost you around 20 gigabytes. So, so yeah, it's not lightweight if you are using these tools, but, uh, but otherwise uh, it is. And it features things like the isolation of data and the application. The application files are bounded to the container image where the data are just mounted to the container. And you may know that the most popular management tool is the Docker. But the Docker container is just a uh, open standard format of the container image, and it could be run on your PC and uh, or you know in cloud in in the virtual machine, or uh, the container platform uh, in Kubernetes, for example. Okay, so uh, if we want to build the container, then we will have to use uh, something called the Docker file. Uh, I think that also we are familiar with with uh, these things. So uh, you, we are using uh, the most important steps are something like preparing the software dependencies. So we are telling the container uh, uh, builder uh, what uh, what container image we are starting with. That we we want some uh, maybe operating system or uh, some build uh, package. And uh, then we want to, to install our dependencies. Uh, we all know this pip in install. And then we want to copy our uh, basically files, application files, and then specify what to do with these files. So when the container will run, uh, the, this, uh, uh, this command will, will be uh, like the primary process uh, bound to the container. Uh, okay, and uh, as I mentioned that uh, the EGI container platform is uh, consists of the compute part and also of uh, the container registry. Uh, that's because uh, as we might know that uh, some remote registries uh, for for example, Docker.com or uh, other services are uh, getting some paywalls, uh, so we are not able to uh, to download many images from from these services and to work with them, which uh, is not very reliable. If you want to to provide uh, some uh, you know, maybe high availability service and so on, because the Kubernetes system has to download the the image uh, from time to time. To uh, to run it, so it would be a shame if if uh, you want to deploy some some service and it will say that hey your uh, internet access provider has blocked access to the to the Docker because you you are rate limited or something like that. So we deployed uh, our 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 own install installation of the uh, container registry, and it can be used to store your artifacts. Basically, the uh, address where it runs is the serid IO for the moment. Um, it will be also the, the uh, EGI branded container registry there. So we'll inform you about that. And uh, you are getting access to the, to the container registry project uh, with the resources in the container platform. So 
with the grant of uh, of the compute part you are also getting the the project and the storage capacity for your container images uh, so it's uh, the, it's being used by this uh, url where the uh, host name is the serid io then there is uh, something that uh, specifies the the project name this is my personal uh, personal container image so it's in my personal space and then the name of the container and maybe if it has some tags like latest or or some uh, version tag then the, the tag is specified there is also a short uh, tutorial how to upload the image and it will skip that you will have slides after the webinar this is how it looks like. If you log in into the platform, you can see that that uh, I have several images uh, images here with the, with some tags. I can I can do some retention policy to not flood the platform with with my old images and uh, and so on. Okay, running containers very simple things for for many of you. I assume uh, uh locally we are using it with the with the docker management tool remotely uh natively within the container platform by calling the uh, kubernetes api via the the cube ctl and uh, sending the requests to to deploy some objects we will see see that in in a minute and uh, we are using manifests to to do that which is the the format of uh, talking to the Kubernetes API. A uh, few tips on uh, using or building containers. Uh, for example, if we 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 are still building the Docker containers as root because uh, we we have to, and uh, uh, the resulting container should ideally be from from the security uh, standpoint like the non-root container so if uh, if i build the, if i build a non-root container uh, it's not possible to install another additional software into the container i have to install it in uh, in the build phase or uh, installation is valid only if uh, i install it to my home of the container so temp dears and hope directories are generally uh, accessible and uh, or writable, better to speak. And uh, uh, yeah, I can specify in the build phase which uh, which directories I want to write via the, via the uh, mechanism of uh, the home or, or hermot. Okay, and uh, yeah, the, the last thing that the container, uh, if I if I change something in the container, it isn't persistent. I need to I need to build it uh, in the build. I need to specify uh, some change in build phase or uh, attach some extra uh, external storage uh, with the data that I want to persist, basically. All right. So that was brief introduction on containers, and and the next is. Uh, uh, introducing of the container platform itself with with some specifics of uh, how we uh, are simplifying things for for the scientific communities and uh, and users. So generally, the Kubernetes is uh, basically the Docker on on steroids. It's uh, it's better multi node, multi cluster, uh, multi cluster orchestrator tool. It was developed uh, by Google in 2014, or or some something like this. And what it basically does is that it uh, it uh, manages the download of the container image uh, that should be run. Uh, it runs the container image and then uh, handles the container's uh, state. Basically, it makes sure that the container is running and uh, it's replicated on on uh, more hardware if uh, if uh, if that's stated in the manifest it handles the networking to the to the running container 
and uh, also the access uh, to the network storage, which is the ex external storage that is used for, for the persistency of, of data, for example. And it does uh, also many, many things, but uh, what it's not capable of is, for example, uh, we are the scientific community, so we know uh, the uh, workload orchestrators or workflow managers like Nextflow and uh, and Snakemake or some, uh, something like uh, things that can run jobs in uh, some graph dependency. So uh, it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't do that. Uh, you can specify that I want uh, to run uh, one container, and after the first one will uh, will end, uh, then I want to run the second one. You you have to use the use use the workflow managers as I mentioned. Okay, so uh, Kubernetes are basically organized in in clusters. The cluster is uh nothing else uh, but it's uh, it's a uh, uh, set of nodes the node is the representation of of the physical uh, machine running in the data center and on the physical node there are pods being run which are which are the uh, containers in in our uh, representation so kubernetes cluster has uh, physical servers and uh, it has uh, logical namespaces, basically. It has user spaces with, with quotas, and uh, it's being used to determine uh, uh, for, the, for the organization uh, of, uh, of your running workload, basically. Uh, the most notable objects that uh, you will be uh, maybe using the most is, uh, is the bot. Which is the smallest deployed unit in uh, in the Kubernetes, and then the deployment, which is the most common way how to how to get your application in the Kubernetes because you can uh, specify all dependencies uh, like networking, uh, mounting of storage, and and environmental variables that should be uh, mount to your to your running container there. Then we will be using the persistent volume claim, which is basically the mounting the persistent storage, and then ingress to uh, get traffic from from the internet. The whole thing is basically managed uh, through the HTTP API, and as I said, there are some clients to uh, to help with the burden of the API which is the kubectl, the widely and most used. And then the EJ container platform will feature the Rancher portal where you can graphically uh, click and, and see uh, your deployments and manage them, edit, and, and so on. The, uh, yeah. When when I'm running, when I'm trying to run something or or uh, doing in doing something in the Kubernetes, like uh, adding a new uh, object, for example, the the deployment or ingress or something, I'm using the manifest file. I will show you in a second how it looks like, but uh, it basically is a format of uh, speaking to the HTTP API. And it says, if I'm running a deployment, it says uh, the pointer of the container image, where to download it, uh, what context should be run. For example, the command, uh, the environmental variables I want to use in the container, or uh, the, persistent, the persistent storage. Uh, if I'm running the, the workload in Kubernetes, the deployments or, or jobs doesn't have the, the vault time or uh, like limited time uh, that the job has to run, like in Slarm or, or batch systems. It, it just uh, runs until, until you pause it, basically. Uh, we can use some, uh, some uh, commands to, to API to 
to monitor the workload if it's running, what uh, what it outputs, and uh, how how many CPU it consumes, and so on. We can use uh, some tools to copy files from from the container or uh, to the container from our local PC. So uh, so we can get some files or add some files, but uh, we can uh, we can do it uh, also the other ways. And uh, of course, uh, we can manage the life cycle of the application. We can enforce some container uh, state. We maybe want to scale up the application, add some replicas, or scale it down. So this is the simple manifest of, uh, of the deployment. And I see that uh, there are some keywords like name, where I specify my name of the of the of the deployment, and then I can specify my uh, image location, which in our case, uh, it should be something like serit.io, like you've seen on previous slides. And then I can specify uh, which port the container outputs and accepts the, the traffic from, from not only the internet, but, uh, but the, the network port, basically. So uh, speaking about the persistency, there are several options how to store your data or work with, with your data in, in the Kubernetes. And uh, uh, for, for some computational temporary files, we can use the, the temp folder, which is accessible to, to write uh, for, uh, for the end user in, in the container. Uh, and uh, it is deleted with the restart of the container. Uh, it can be shared with more running containers. Uh, so if we want to do that, uh, we need to use something that it's called like empty dir. Uh, and the empty dir might be located uh, on a physical machine memory. So it's uh, it's it it may get uh, pretty fast because you are accessing the the RAM memory of the machine or a local SSD or NVMe, uh, which is typically faster than accessing the the network storage. And empty there uh, can be shared between containers, but within the one uh, manifest in in one deployment, I can. I can specify that I run. I might run more than one uh, containers, so empty there will share data uh, between them. And then there is the PVC, which we, which is the uh, acronym for the persistent volume claim. And uh, for that, we need to specify specify a manifest, uh, and it's the persistent storage that typically is network storage, some NFS or TIFFs, S3, we will cover that in a second. So the persistent volume claim can be uh, of several types. I can say that I want to only uh, read or I want to, uh, to write uh, once, so it can be mounted only to one pod, or if I want to share data between many, many, many pods, I, I might use this. And this is how uh, how the persistent claim looks like in in the manifest file. So I need to deploy this to use it in in the deployment specification, which uh, this is the this is the uh, basically uh, the reference to this file. Okay, so uh, the EGI container platform has uh, several storage classes available, which might be used. Uh, we, talk, we talked about the local flash, which is pretty fast, but it has some disadvantages. And uh, the storage classes that might be used in the in the platform are the NFS CSI, which is the mentioned uh, five terabyte old flash network storage, uh, which is maybe backed to to some other location, but it's uh, it's very fast. Then it might be used the uh, SSH FS if you have some um, SSH FS server and you have access to it, you can specify it in the manifest uh, uh, through the secret and 
and uh, it will get mounted to the running container. Also the web DAO and uh, uh, one special thing is that uh, we support also the one data mount. Uh, so you can mount your uh, one data space or data set into the container automatically, uh, knowing only the, the space ID and having uh, the access tokens to the EGI Data Hub service. So speaking of networking, uh, we want to use, uh, we want to access network, access uh, things running in our container. So uh, uh, I, I will maybe uh, skip this for, for some reason, uh, for reason of uh, time. And uh, uh, for accessing the, uh, from the internet, we are using uh, typically the ingress. Ingress is for HTTP or HTTPS services, and it routes the the external traffic to to the uh, set of uh, uh, set through the set of uh, networking in the in the cluster to your uh, pod, basically. And if you are not using the uh, HTTP service, then you have to use the load balancer service which are basically accessible in the EGI compute, uh, container compute, because we have one managed load balancer service, which should be used by the user, uh, by the users, and uh, they doesn't have to deploy own load balancer service. So, so this is the one of the features of the new, uh, new generation of EGI uh, container compute. And uh, this is the specification basically of the ingress that is using the managed load balancer service. This is the annotation that you should uh, that you should use. And then there is the certificate manager uh, which will uh, obtain a certificate for for that uh, ingress and uh, the traffic uh, will have the TLS uh, encryption basically. And this is the manifest manifest of how the uh, uh, ingress uh, object looks like when uh, I would like to deploy it. Uh, it features also the the domain name system I told you about. So, uh, what uh, what is uh, what uh, uh, what can be deployed in uh, in the in the Kubernetes, uh, basically any applications. We, we are trying to, to uh, deploy or teach our users to deploy things uh, to the Kubernetes because in the virtual machines, you have to always uh, note that uh, you, you have the, the very high, uh, not lightweight uh, uh, maintenance of, of the virtual machine itself. You have to to manage the or all libraries, you have to to uh, update the operating system and and uh, think about the security of the of the of the virtual machine. Uh, that's not the case with uh, with the Kubernetes, where where you are only running basically uh, one task or or one job to uh, to do something. You are not running the whole. For example, the SSH uh, libraries or Samba shares or, or something like that. So you are minimizing the the attack vectors on on your applications, basically. And uh, this is set of applications that uh, we are running in the, in the Kubernetes or our users are running in, in the Kubernetes. Uh, some of them are using the techniques to to basically cloud burst uh, some. Uh, computations, and uh, we are also running it for for production services like Indico or Lime Survey, or uh, some other uh, things. So now uh, the live demo. So let's hope that everything will work well. And uh, in the demo, we will basically try to build a Docker container with uh, my very simple application, which is just the static uh, static file uh, with some text. And uh, this 
we want to uh, to run in the Kubernetes. So, okay. So first of all, I will need to build a Docker container first. I have a Docker file for it. So we are start. I'm saying in the Docker file that we are starting from the Nginx, uh, and we are using the Nginx unprivileged because uh, in the EJ container platform you you can't use uh, the root containers as I mentioned. Uh, so we will be using the the Nginx, which is unprivileged. Then we will copy uh, our application files to the to the container which is, in my case, just a very simple HTML file. And I call it uh, the application. And I will say that the container should expose the port on 8080. So my application will be accessible through the port 8080 internally in, uh, in the Kubernetes networking. And uh, at the end, I'm saying that if you will run the container, start this process. OK, so uh, let's quickly build the container. And I will take it with the Ceridio, my personal space, and to the name of the container. So it could be run in the uh, Kubernetes. OK, so uh, I have built my container, basically. And we will go to the Harbor registry. To show, to show you that I don't have any uh, containers that are named EGI webinar. So I will log in to the platform. And you can see that I have many, many things here, but uh, nothing called EGI webinar. So let's push the container image to the uh, registry. Oh, maybe maybe I would like to. Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah. So it uh, layer already exists because uh, nginx unprivileged is in the in in our repository is uh, is already existing. But uh, the one layer that has to be pushed is that I copied my application files to to the container image. So. This is feature of, of the containers and, and layers of, of, uh, of uh, container building. And uh, now we will basically try to run my application uh, in the Kubernetes. So I have the manifest file for it. And uh, it says that, please, please, run this container from, from this URL and run it with uh, exported port 8080. Uh, this is some security context that are required to be to be used and are well documented in, in our documentation. So so now don't be afraid of of, of this. And uh, here I'm specifying that I, I would like to run my application in one replica. Uh, and here at the bottom, I can I can tell that I want to environmental variable, which is which name is the EJ admin application secret with with some value, and we'll see if we if we can we can show this from the from the container. So I will uh, change directory to to the deployment. And as I can see, I have the deployment YAML, which is this file. And I will try to apply this deployment. I'm using the kubectl uh, command apply, which is calling the API with my manifest file. And I will need to specify the valid namespace where I will be deploying my application. Let's briefly uh, log in to the Rancher to see. Yes, I, I will be using the EGI check-in as I as I mentioned that it uh, it is connected with uh, with that, and uh, I will use my uh, home my home uh, uh, 
institution to log in to do EJ check-in, which is the Masaryk University. And after some, some seconds, I am back in the Rancher dashboard and seeing the, the Kubernetes cluster management portal. And uh, the first login to the portal should look like this. And you will see that we have the catch-all cluster available to, to all users, basically. Uh, it's called Kuba cluster. And, uh, and if we click on, on, uh, on the Kuba cluster that we want to use it, we will, uh, we will be redirected to the, the cluster management dashboard. And here I can see that uh, if I go to projects and namespaces, I can see that I have only one project and th at the moment, uh, which is only featured. I have more projects, but uh, but for this demo, uh, I selected only only this one, which uh, which is uh, something that uh, is interesting for us. And I will click to deployments to check if I have any deployments available in the in in the container platform. And uh, I don't. So let's try to to start up my container. So calling the the API API through the kubectl, the Kubernetes is downloading my uh, container and it's already running. Uh, what can I see from from this uh, this view is that uh, my deployment is active. I have uh, I have one pod uh, running, and I can maybe view logs. I can see that nginx is has been started, and it has more worker processes to to handle my requests. Uh, that's uh, that's okay, and also I can execute shell from the from the web UI, but I can do it in the in the kubectl command line as well, and I can. Uh, I can do uh, whatever I want, basically. And I can see if, if there is my variable that I specified in the manifest file. And I hope you can see it. And uh, it says Ahoy from the Czech Republic, which is the greeting translated hi from the Czech Republic. But uh, we don't have any access to the uh, to the container from the point of the service. I can't uh, access the nginx from from the internet because it runs only on the uh, private network. Uh, and to for for this, I need to deploy service and the ingress object. Uh, the service object is basically saying that if I'm running more replicas. Uh, then internally uh, assign some domain name and do all these stuff like round robin and and stuff like that to to this particular deployment. So if I would have like three three replicas of my of my application, uh, I will have only the one uh, service which uh, which handles the internal uh, internal networking. And uh, in the meantime, it also says uh, what port I want to forward to to what port in in the container, basically. So let's uh, let's deploy that object, also using the cube CTL apply. Okay, and the network object has been uh, created. I would have to refresh my my dashboard to to see it properly and uh, in the meantime yes it might be loading a bit oh come on yeah okay so we can see that now i have assigned the the service so I obtained something that is internally called the cluster IP, and now uh, the container is basically accessible from from uh, any other 
container running within the within the same namespace. Uh, okay, but we we would like to uh, access it from the from the whole internet. So let's deploy also the the ingress object, and the ingress object is tell telling me or telling the Kubernetes to route basically this part, uh, to basically route all traffic that comes to this domain name to the service that we deployed in, in the previous step and uh, say that the, the service is responding on the port 8080. Uh, and we can, we can notice that uh, we are also specifying that we want to TLS so we want to SSL certificate for, for the domain name. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the annotations that help uh, Kubernetes to determine which load balancer service we want to use. This uh, Nginx uh, load balancer service is within the uh, EGI container platform shared among the users and uh, is provided. Uh, so you don't have to install any, any load balancers by yourself. So let's deploy the ingress. And uh, uh, and within within few seconds, we will see that uh, we we that uh, our application should be accessible from the internet. Yes. And we can see that it's it's the version 1.0 and it's being run in the in the container basically uh so uh okay we have we have uh maybe three minutes left so i will try to show you how to update a version of the of our application and make it live uh so i'm modifying the version source code of my application I will have to go back to the command line and basically build the new container with maybe a better uh, tag which version it is so we can recognize it later and also the Kubernetes can recognize it. So let's build. Okay, so maybe maybe this is the this is the something that uh, it happens when. We we want to live demo something. Oh, I know what happened. We are in the in the deployment folder. My bad. Okay, so uh, we build the container, and we will have to push push that container as well with the proper version tag, which is one point one. And as we can see, that nginx uh, unprivileged is already there, but uh, we also pushed the the change. Uh, probably this is the layer where we changed our HTML file. Okay, so now let's go to deployments and tell Kubernetes that we want a new version of of our container running. And I will use Vim for that. And uh, I will modify modify the container URL targeting the the proper uh, tag and basically apply the deployment.yaml but uh, what will happen is that uh, the kubernetes will spin up the new version and then it will terminate the old version. So it will wait basically uh, until the new version is uh, up and running. So I can minimize my uh, downtime, uh, downtime, yeah, downtime. So let's let's try that. And we can see that there is the in progress, there is terminating and, and container creating, and we are done. That was pretty fast because the container is very small but and we refresh the url and we can see that we are on the new version and this of course can be pretty much uh, automatic process so when i was talking 
about how we built, uh, uh, we are building the containers, we might use uh, some GitHub actions or GitLab pipelines to uh, automatize the process. And uh, after, and it goes like uh, working with uh, with Git. So I will push the new version of my of my application to the repository, and uh, the pipeline will will be triggered. We'll build the new container, and then uh, then I. Uh, might use not only the continuous integration but also the continuous deployment where i will uh, distribute the application uh, within the pipeline uh, to to the kubernetes without without having to to basically manage all that uh, virtual machines and and so on and uh, i can scale up the application uh, basically to to free replicas or four or five that's only saying that uh, that uh, there is a vertical scaling uh, of the application uh, <clears throat> and the ingress will will round round robin between between the application so it is uh, mentioned to be uh, the stateless uh, applications if you want to to scale uh, state full applications it will be maybe more complex for the application logic but it's also possible to to do that because there are uh, there are also objects that that can manage the stateful sets. And uh, okay, I think that uh, this is all for for the demo, and maybe it's time for for the discussion. Okay, thank you very much, and drink that's a very, very impressive and also this uh, a, this development for this uh, uh, platform, I think it's really make it much more easy to use the EGI containers and providing a lot of uh, running time information for Kubernetes. Um, we have a couple of minutes left. I think uh, people, if you can, if you want to uh, have a question, we can directly talk to Andrea. And uh, we have a one uh, question from Oleg, Oleg, and uh, he asked where I can find it infrastructure architecture schema, and is it make sense or uh, or um, or Oleg, I can make you speak. Oh uh, yes, it does make sense. The the infrastructure scheme, uh, we don't have one. Uh, because we we haven't needed to, we needed one, but uh, we have many information about how the system works in in our documentation, which is referred in in the slides. Will be available to you after the after the webinar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, uh, I hope this answer your questions. Anyone else? I want to uh, quickly have a directly. I take this opportunity to talk to Andrea. Uh, we we really only have one hour, but probably in future we can organize some uh, hand-on session during EGI conference and training. Uh, training. And anyone want to uh, ask anything? And there is a question from Jane. And Oh yes, uh, the webinar is recorded. Don't worry, uh, we will uh, provide you the link and the slides. And Carl Frederick, I I I can make your talk, I guess. Uh, Carl Frederick, you yes, can... hello. Okay, yes. yes. So we have a Docker container that runs on hub.edi.eu for iSCAT user analysis. It has MATLAB and um, VNC desktop and software. Is it going to be possible to deploy new versions of that container through this method? Uh, and in, so if so, when is that going to be available? Uh, I don't I don't think that I understand the question correctly, but uh, yeah, the, the- I understood that this is runs at another address, e in front of the um, C set or something. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is but, but, but yeah but this container uh container cloud service is not only for the running the Jupyter containers it's much more broader context yeah, yeah. of uh, so so yeah and I understand it, that I'm just 
wondered if this my question might be is this registry the same for hub.tgi.eu and this system as you demonstrated today uh, i think that the the hub egi is uh, only for the jupyter notebooks yeah yeah and uh, this is the system where you can run your own installation of the jupyter it will be not replaced uh, by the by the new system Okay, but will there be a common registry for yeah, and we are containers speaking, or yeah, 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 and we are speaking about the the container registry. Yes, there will be, and it will be not uh, on the domain hub.egi.eu. It will be maybe something like uh, registries.egi.eu or something like that. But yeah, for the container uh, images, there will be uh, there will be centralized. The registry that I I showed the this is the this window the the harbor instance uh, nowadays yeah it is running on the serid.io which is our own uh, infrastructure domain for that but uh, yeah I can see we have colliding uh, names so we will we will have to rename it and uh, brand it uh, as the EGI. Okay, thanks a lot. I yeah, have a, we, another yeah. meeting now, so but yeah. thanks anyway for the uh, information. Uh, yes, uh, it's the time up, but uh, we have a, a two last um, questions. One is from Ju Song. I enable you to talk. You can talk. You can ask. You you can talk. Ju. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, thank you. I just lost the uh, big picture. Like uh, these services provide uh, like to public or. How should I use it, or is like replaced of the uh, regist uh, the the Docker registry? Uh, I know it's a private one. Yeah, I can use it as a private one, but the, I didn't see any place where showing the price or uh, different information, like how how different it is uh, compared to like other registry and other services. Um, yes, uh, good question. The the container registry is uh, is just a supplementary service to the to the container platform to the executing uh, execution uh, of the container workloads, uh, so uh, that's something that goes with with the container platform, uh, and it will be upon the the request and signing the signing the SLAs uh, with the EGI. With, with some uh, group or or the project uh, yeah. and uh, yeah but we might uh, serve uh, this uh, uh, standalone as as the as the docker uh, container registry yeah but uh, the features of of the of the own uh, own registry is that you you don't have to uh, you don't have to pay for example for the for the docker hub which has the the paywall right now and yep. and has some some policies on that and uh, maybe other services which uh, which don't let you um, uh, use the private uh, like private access control to to the containers uh, this is like fully fully open uh, platform for for the scientific use use cases and the, the rancher is the same right now uh, we need to like apply for some yeah. project or okay yes basically okay, basically know. as i uh, i mentioned that in in slides and i will get back uh, to them and uh, the access policy right now is defined like uh, like this we we have uh, some free tier projects uh, that is available uh, uh, when you sign up for the voaccess.dgi.eu, but it's only for you to to try out uh, the the container platform, uh, deploy maybe some playground uh, containers mm -hmm. and and only play with it. And if you want uh, guaranteed resources, mm, you will have to go through the open calls that EGI uh, has to to reach uh, for the services. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. We have very, very final last question from Benjamin. Benjamin, please. Uh, you can unmute your microphone. And he also put his uh, question in the Q&A. Um, Benjamin, okay. can you unmute yourself? 
uh, let me do have okay. a range of available public IPs equal to number of services. For instance, your example with store 100 users. Uh, uh for no you 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 have only no 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 that's uh, that's why i told that we we uh, the 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 service um, basically includes the the uh, load balancer service which has the one public ip address or on our side it's it's more than one public ip address it's load balancer service so it has like 10 maybe 10 uh, ipv4s and ipv6 uh, ip addresses but uh, it is only uh, uh, the only uh, thing that you will be you will be using in uh, in uh, when deploying your own applications you don't have to you don't have to bring ip addresses or or uh, do something like that but if you are deploying non http services uh, then uh, then yes then you will have to have some some range of uh, of free ip addresses because we can't share basically uh, ports and all this stuff. Uh, so we have, we have, I think at the moment, like 100 uh, IP addresses on the IPv4 and uh, many more on IPv6 for non HTTP services. Okay. And we are managing that and uh, we are pretty much right now flexible with, with, uh, with these things. But yeah, that's the limited uh, limited uh, resource, and uh, there are maybe the the other ways uh, how to uh, deploy 100 instances of of some of some application that requires the same port. Basically, you would have to deploy it on on several ports or uh, or stuff like that under the one IP address. Okay, I it. hope that I answered the. The question yes, it's a very challenging issue okay thank you let's uh, give a thanks to our speaker andrea thank you for your excellent work and thanks for all today to join us and with this i will close today's webinar thanks for everyone thank you very much for joining and having me cheers